wish you guys could see everything that's going on around me right now. It's kind of funny. Uh, and here we are. All right. So today's conversation is learn to love no. Uh, please write it down. This is a follow-up from the conversation yesterday when I asked you to, one of the questions that I gave you is, what happens if I fail? And that's not a great question because we don't want to think of failure as a possibility, but it is. Uh, things are tough. It's not going to be tough. I'm talking to myself right now, so you guys are just here listening to me having a conversation with myself. And, and the possibility of failure for me it is 100% real, okay? Now, the different type of failure that I wanna focus on today is temporary setbacks. Uh, you're scheduling appointments, you're sitting at the kitchen table, you're making a listing presentation, and you get no, okay? So that's failure and learn to love no. All right, here's the first thing I wanna share with you. What was the first word your mother and father taught you? <laughs> it was the word no, wasn't it? And how do they teach you the meaning of the word no? Usually by inflicting pain with no. Now, mom and dad did that because they loved us, because they wanted to protect us, because they wanted to keep us from doing things that would cause harm. Um, and your earliest program, your earliest programming was to associate no with pain. The word no keeps us from serving others and achieving our goals. When prospective clients blow up and they will over trivial matters or give you a rough time for no apparent reason, these people have been pushed into the danger zone, but not by you. They need someone to stand in for the bad guy who isn't there. And that person who's going to stand in for the bad guy who isn't there is you. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn down the bad guy role and grab the good guy role instead. Here's how champions win by casting themselves as the good guys. They keep calm. They listen carefully. And they speak to the heart of the matter at the first opportunity. I understand. I understand how you feel. If I were you, I would feel the same way. Now, in my experience, here's why you feel that way. And, all right, tonality, pace, remember, get on the other side of the net with them. You're not playing singles tennis, you're playing doubles tennis. And this person is not your competition. You, they are your partner. And it is your job to get over on the other side of that net with them and help them through this challenge. Champions know when the most effective presentation is not to give one. Oh boy, write that down. Champions know that sometimes the most effective presentation is not to give one. Okay, so how to reject negative effects of rejection? How to reject the negative effects of rejection? Here we go. What's needed is a system that will allow us to do that all of the time. So what is your system for dealing with rejection? Step one. As the first step to using this formula, you determine the cash value of each rejection that you receive. Okay, so get out a piece of paper, get out a pen, get out a calculator and do some math. If it takes 50 conversations to lead to a sale. Now, it could be 100 conversations. This is why you track so that you know what the formula is. If it takes 50 conversations to lead to a sale, and your average commission is $10,000, then I want you to take $10,000 and divide it by 50. Now, whatever that number is, every time you hear a rejection, you didn't get no. Let's say that number is $200. I don't know what it is, I didn't do the math. But let's say it's $200. That means every no is worth $200. 
it's not worth nothing. It's worth $200 because it's one more no getting you closer to yes, which is worth $10,000. Now, if it takes 100 conversations to earn to get a yes, then you're going to take $10,000. You're going to divide it by 100. And every no is worth that amount. All right, champions operate on ratios. Write it down. As a sales professional, you know your contacts to closing ratio. Write that down. So many real estate agents don't. They don't know what their contact to close ratio is. Why? Because they're not tracking. If they were tracking those numbers, then they would know the answers. Professionals know the numbers. If you're a baseball fan, oh my gosh, they're fanatics about statistics. I mean, if they can track how many times you do something in a baseball game, they're going to do it. Now, why wouldn't we run our real estate business the same way? Track everything. All right, champions operate on ratios. As a sales professional, you know your contacts to closing ratio. This is, that is, you know how many people you have to contact in order to close one sale. Keeping track of this ratio takes hardly any effort and yields valuable information. It takes hardly any effort to just have a piece of paper. And when you make a call, tack. Second call, tack. Third call, fourth call, fifth call. You all remember how to do this. When somebody picks up the phone, when you schedule an appointment, you're keeping track of that. Now, you're also keeping track of how many conversations did I have in March? How many listings did I get? All right, now I know how many conversations I need to have in order to get a listing. How many conversations did I have in April? How many closings did I have? Now you know how many closings you need to have in order to, and how many contacts you need to have in order to get a closing. Track everything. Trust me, I realize the conversations you're having in April aren't leading to the closings that you're having in April. That shows up maybe in May, June, July, because don't forget follow-up. Just because it didn't turn into a sale this month doesn't mean it didn't turn into a sale. Track numbers over a long period of time so you know what the follow-up numbers are. All right, you are not paid by the sale, you are paid by the contact. It's a paradigm shift. This isn't a weird, twisted, non-essential way of looking at sales activity. It's reality. You have to make 10 ton contacts to close one sale. All right, so that's your ratio. It's not going to be your number. I know the numbers in real estate are a lot more contacts to a sale, but that's what the author of the book is telling us. Okay. Earnings are not started by sales. They are started by contacts. This brings true, this being true, why should you convince yourself that you're paid $100 for a sale, but nothing for a contact? Not only is that self-defeating, it's untrue as well. So you're changing your paradigm. You're changing the way you look at this. Change the way you look at things, things you look at change. All right, find your own cash value and use that to psych yourself up before each contact call. And after each contact rejection, I didn't get a no. I earned $100 on my way to earning $10,000. The payoff is built into this fact. You'll make more contact calls because you'll suffer less pain doing it. So if lead generation is causing you pain, it's because you're paying attention to the goal, not the activity. If lead generation is causing you pain, you're paying attention to the outcome not the activity. When you focus on the activities and you ignore the results, you're actually going to learn to love lead generation because it's the thrill. It's the thrill of the hunt. I got one. That's exciting. But if you're looking at the results, you're like, I'm not getting any, I'm not getting any results. Oh my gosh, I hate this. It sucks. It's because you're focusing on the goals and you're not focusing on the activities. You'll make better calls because you're more relaxed. You'll make better calls because you're more relaxed. Uh, Lonnie, it's How to Master the Art of Selling by Tom Hopkins. No is good. That no is where the money is at. 
Now I'm going to give you five act, five attitudes towards rejection. I'm going to give you five different ways of looking at rejection. Number one, I never see failure as failure, but only as a learning experience. I never see failure as failure, but only as a learning experience. The second way that you're going to look at rejection in order to change the way you look at rejection is I never see failure as failure, but only as a negative feedback to me to change course in my direction. The third attitude towards rejection is I never see failure as failure, but only as the opportunity to develop my sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, you got to be able to laugh at yourself, guys. All right. The fourth attitude towards rejection is I never see failure as failure, but only as an opportunity to practice my techniques and perfect my performance. I've told you this many, many times when somebody says, John, of course, it's easy for you to you internalize these conversations well i've got over seventeen thousand hours invested in it i've got over seventeen thousand hours invested in it because that two to three hours of lead generation every day if it's nothing else it's practice i am perfecting my skills all right fifth final i never see failure as failure but only as the game i must play to win all right, real estate is my sport. It's a game. I show up every day and I and, and I play. It don't work. Games are fun. Work is not. Now, I want you to hear something before I close. When you go to the next event, you go to the next convention or learning event, you're going to see a speaker teach how to get 10 listings every month. One of the things you're going to hear at these events over and over again is you're going to hear the person up on the stage ask, who likes to lead generate? Now, everybody in the room is going to laugh and nobody's going to raise their hand. Guys, I'm begging you. Be the one person in the room who puts your hand up. I want your mindset to be, I love lead generation. Are you kidding? I think it's the best thing that I do. And I had a coaching conversation with one of my agents yesterday, and she had this huge aha. And she said, John, I figured it out. And I said, tell me, what'd you figure out? She said, my job is lead generation. I'm like, there you go. I said, by the way, it's everybody's job. If you own a law practice, your job is lead generation. If you're a doctor, your job is lead generation. The guys that are here moving us, by the way, shout out to... Uh, to hold on a second. <laughs> well, I know Manny. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name of the company. Hey guys, hold on. What's the name of your moving company again? My guys moving. My guys moving. Okay. So shout out to my guys moving. <laughs> Their job is lead generation. I called them. And I didn't call anybody else. They were my only call because of Manny. Because Manny is a genius at lead generation. Because Manny showed up at my office and talked during team meetings. Manny showed up at golf, golf outings and handed out water. Manny showed up at happy hours and socialized with everybody there. It's freaking lead generation. Manny knows his job is lead generation, and that's why my guy's moving is me moving the Deeks family to Palm Harbor and somebody else because they've got it. Their job is lead generation. All right, one more thing. Focus. If you guys are hearing what I'm hearing, watch this video again and, and just give me your honest opinion that I get distracted. Or did I stay on task? Was I focused? Um, I know you say I was focused. All right, take this off off mute and talk to me. Talk really loud so I can hear you because it's loud here. Yeah.
Lonnie, Valerie, Jeff, Jack, Felicia, Lance, Hi, Sarah, Eric, <laughs> Tracy, Leba, Kristen. Talk to me. So this is Tracy. Can you hear me? Tracy, loud and clear. Okay. All right. So I like, and I got what you said, um, and it did start to change uh, my thinking about lead generation being my job and loving that. And what I've experienced is when I've talked to people, because I love talking to people, that's what I love. Mm -hmm. It's developing relationships. And that's how you're generating leads. And the result, kind of the, just the natural consequences is if you really like it and you really care about the people, you're going to have results. There you go. So I really got that. And so when that happens, I'll be the one that raises my hands in the conference. So no, it was cool. Thank you. No, that was good direction for me. Instead okay. of looking at the result, look at developing those relationships that are going to produce those results. There you go, Tracy. Develop those relationships, uh, make deposits, bring value, lead with gratitude, and also develop your skills. If we don't like lead generation, it's because we are we think the job of lead generation with every single call is to get It's not. So I'm, I'm Bonnie, excited. talk to me. <laughs> yes, I'm happy to. I'm so excited and I can't stop smiling because you are a living example of showing people that the job is fun, that you are playing and sitting there in the middle of your movement and spread this much of happiness and uh, excitement and, and take care of us. So thank you so much. This is amazing. I think that's the best thing that I can take today. Yeah, uh, guys, I want to show you something. Now, I've never done this, so just hang with me. I'll show you the craziness that's going on here, okay? Oh, my gosh. That room was full of boxes. Hey, you're on TV. That box was, that, this room was full of boxes like 10 minutes ago. These guys are incredible. They're going to have us packed in like five minutes, like a NASCAR packing crew. Look at this. Pretty impressive, right? Okay. Yeah. Crazy. So thank you. All right, thank you guys. You. Thank you for being a part of this. Uh, shout out to My Guys Moving. If you live in South Florida and you need a mover, these guys are your guys. These guys, are your guys. Um, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this journey with you. Uh, I'm moving, but I'm not saying goodbye. Uh, in this digital world, for 99% of our group, nothing's going to change. I'm going to show up and I'm going to look at you on your computer every single day, just like I have for the last three years. Uh, one change, we will not meet tomorrow. We are unloading trucks tomorrow. So I will see everybody Monday morning. Uh, make it a great day. Um uh, Take some time off this weekend. Remember, never truly off, never truly on. Uh, recharge your batteries, sharpen the saw, uh, and I'll see everybody Monday morning. Make it a great day, guys. Hey, John, have a safe move, buddy. Enjoy your weekend. Give my love to the family. Thanks, Lance. Well, all right. Take care, everybody. Love you guys. Thanks, John. My pleasure.